So I just got a revelation right now of why Buddhism in particular is regarded as evil in God's sight. You know, I'll tell you why. When they meditate, you know, you know how I tell you guys to meditate, but what am I telling you to meditate on? Am I telling you to search for ways to help yourself, heal yourself, deliver yourself, focus on self? See the trend here, self, self, self. The reason why Satan, his kingdom is so busy. Satan's kingdom is so busy. People traveling in and out of his kingdom is because since the very beginning, people have been looking out for themselves. When all you care about, for the most part, is the person in the mirror, then that's who you're going to be looking out for. So in terms of yoga, in terms of meditation, all of that, there is this way that seems right to a man. Well, how could that be negative? Well, how could that be evil? I'm just trying to better myself, etc. But what does the Bible say? I'm going to tell you, man. I'm telling you the truth. Jesus Christ Remember when Peter Denied Jesus Christ three times Peter had just told Jesus I'm gonna I'm die with you I'm gonna die for you And I'll never renounce you I'll never deny you And then Jesus told him What was gonna happen before it happened But what was the problem there What was the problem with that picture Peter relied on his own abilities His own strength his own, the way that seemed right to him. And if there's anything that you take away from Christianity, it's the fact that when God comes into your life, he doesn't want you. He doesn't want to do life with you. He wants to do life through you. There's a dying to self. There's a denying of self. There is a picking up your cross. There is a putting everybody before you right there is a selflessness to christianity there is this like putting god above all things it's not not your needs above all things not your wants above all things not your desires above all things not your lust above all things not make it first place above all things not put me on a pedestal not put my name above and lights Make me famous and money and, and famous and rich. No, this is where Satan steps in. What did Satan offer Jesus? The kingdoms of the world. What was the offer there? Tempted Jesus. What, what was the temptation there? To put himself above God. To put himself above the mission. To put himself ab above and beyond his lust, the, the, the flesh. To put, to sit on the... The throne before his time was There would come a point in time Where God exalts you And you quote unquote sit on the throne And you reap the benefits of everything you sowed But then even then It's not about you Because when we get to heaven What, what, what are we going to do in heaven We're going to cast our crowns In God's feet It all goes back to him in the end The crown is what represents all your deeds All your actions, your whole life it's like the bigger the crown, the more jewels on the crown, the, the more bedazzled the crown is, the more you gave yourself up, up for God on earth. So there's going to be people that have a rinky-dink crown, and there's going to be people that have a crown that makes you turn your head when they walk past you. But in the end, all of them will cast their crowns at God's feet, signifying something very important, which, which that's what the whole video is. The basis of this video, the foundation of this video is about, has to do with all of their actions. Everything was for God. Everything was not for themselves, for the crown. It wasn't for the, the, the treasure in heaven. It wasn't for the acknowledgement before man, the pats in the back. What did God say about, about uh, fasting? Did he not say, don't broadcast it to the world? Did he not tell you when you do good deeds, don't don't let everybody know that you're doing a good deed. Because why? He doesn't want it to be about you. Everything in the Bible points back at God. 
the more you make God like your image on earth, if I could put it like that, where your mind is about God, your heart is about God, your actions are for God. What the Bible says, when you work, work as if you're working unto the Lord. Don't work like if you're working unto your, your boss, your supervisor, whoever it is, right? So when you do it, you bring God honor with your labor. Cover to cover in the Bible, it has to do with us acknowledging and being aware of our identity, of why we're put here on earth in the first place. The devil has thwarted the reason why you're here on earth, and many people think it's for them. It's not. But the goodness of God, when you put him where he belongs, he'll put you in a higher place. He'll exalt you, he'll bless you, he'll reward you, he'll give you these things because you got the revelation that it wasn't about you. Finally, they got it. They understand. It's not about you. So now that you know that it's not about you and you do know that it's about me, I'll put you where you've always wanted to be because now when you get there, you won't be haughty. You won't be prideful. You won't be dusting the, sh the dust off your shoulder, looking at me. Yeah, yeah, look at me, look at me. No, you'll be humble and humility in that exalted place. Because you still, in that exalted place, understand, it's still about God. It's not about me. I'm here to serve God. I'm here to do His will, not my own will. So there's a lot of repentance along the journey. Oh, man, you know. Because every single time you put yourself before God, you regret it. Every single time you put your, your, yourself in the place of where God should be, you live a life of having to pray to God to fix something, heal something, deliver you of something, help you pass something because something went wrong along the way. And he's trying to teach you design and order. He's trying to tell you, seek first the kingdom of God. That's first. That's not... Okay, I got a slot over here. There's a there's a room right here, God. You can put right here after my job, after my kids, after my spouse. I got you right here, God. I love you, God. Got you a spot right here on the passenger seat. You know, no. It's a process. It's a process to yield. It's a process to submit. It's a process to... Um, the revelation that I'm speaking of is a process to capture it. Because why? It's an insult. It's an offense to say this life is not about you. Well, who is it? What else is it about? I'm the one living it. It's an offense. How many how many people did Jesus offend when he was on earth? He offended that they, 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 they crucified him because he was correcting everybody and telling them, no, you're doing this wrong. You're doing it because of the traditions. Your, your heart is not behind it. No, you're just, you know, the you, you strain a gnat, but you, you, you allow a camel to go through. You put certain things in the front of the line. The people that, the people that you like, the people that have money, you see them out, up at front because you can get something from them. And the poor people and the people that you don't like, you see them all the way in the back. And, and, and Jesus was rebuking. And he said, not. Nah, aren't you playing the judge right now? Hey, well, you should pay attention to the judge above all judges. So Jesus... Everything's humility and humbleness has to do with like, take out the plank out of your own eye before you want to take out the stem from, from somebody else's eye. Look at yourself before you look at other people. You're not all that. You think you are. You really think that you're so shiny and polished. You're not. And I'll put myself in the front of the line, guys. Because the fact is, is that our ways, even though we can think, this is the way that man thinks. I didn't kill nobody. I haven't stolen anything today. I only lied like five times today. I'm a good person. That's our standard. That's our standard as humans. It's pathetic. And um, the standard of, of good in God's eyes is when the rich young ruler came to Jesus and said, Good teacher, what shall I do to inherit the kingdom of heaven? He said, Why do you call me good? He said, None, none are good. Only God is good. What was Jesus doing right there? 
putting the focus on God, not on himself. Teaching you and me. I want you to do the same. Washing the feet of the disciples. Humbling himself. Saying stuff like, you call me Lord, you call me Master. Yeah, look at me. Crouching down, washing your dirty feet. I'm setting for you an example so that you can treat each other this way. See, we can't cherry pick what we want in the Bible. We can't cherry pick. You got to gotta live out if you want to be, you know, what God called you to be. <clears throat> the more you eat of God, the more you search God, seek God, learn from God, the more... He'll give you an appetite. He'll give you the desire to do the right thing. The more a stranger you are to God, the more foreign everything seems. The more insulted you become. The more irritated and annoying everything is. The more even disgusted you, you feel about things like what I'm saying right now. It doesn't make any sense. Because the why? The flesh is enmity towards the spirit. And the spirit is enmity towards the flesh. They hate each other. So if you're not in the spirit, you're by default in the flesh. And so you won't have an ear to hear. We'll end it there. God bless.